piece of red string and I threaded it through a binder clip. The binder clip is carrying a passenger underneath. Let's say that this is the top of a mountain and we are designing a funicular. I want to carry this passenger up to the top of the mountain, summit of the mountain. How can you do this? One solution is to just uh, widen the string like this and then make the whole thing go upward. But I don't think the engineers will accept this solution. So what we do is to keep those two strings absolutely parallel, no cheating, but then tug on them in alternating fashion. So tug, 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 and look, the clip starts going up spontaneously toward the summit of the mountain. That's strange, right? Because if you're just looking at the vicinity in my hands, what I'm doing is up and down, up and down, and it's a purely symmetric motion, up and down, up and down. So there's no directionality. And if anything, gravity is pointing downward. I mean, this should keep coming down. But instead, by doing a completely symmetric up and down motion, I can take this thing upward in a way that breaks the symmetry. Yeah? It prefers to go up and not come down. So that is rather strange. And the wonderful thing about this is that it works even if you're not paying attention. You know, it's a really simple device. And even if you are not paying attention and being distracted by, for example, my friend um, Brady there, I can just do this and then, wait a minute, it's coming down instead. So uh, that's, that's wrong. So I'm just watching this and then, no, no, it's coming down. No, it's not going up. What is going on? Whereas, you know, if I am paying attention and, okay, so this is uh, the device. And it, if I'm paying, paying attention and not being distracted by the camera or anything, then I can do this focus parallel and tug, tug, tug. It does go up. <laughs> All right, what's going on here? What we are doing, suppose that keeping the strings parallel, I tug on the left one, whereas I let go of the right one. And when I do this initially, you see, to exaggerate a little, this clip turns a little like this. But that means you see that this string is touching the left part of the clip only lightly, whereas the right one is entangled with the with a clip, so this produces more friction. And in fact, the static friction, whereas this can slide, and that's a dynamic friction, and we discussed that dynamic friction is slightly smaller than static friction. When I do this, this sliding friction wants to pull the clip down, and this friction wants to push the clip up, but because the right friction is the static and the entangled friction, and the left one is a sliding and free friction, um, this push-up is stronger than this pull-down. That's why in this stroke, it goes up. And similarly, when I pull the right one and left one, now it twists like this. Left one gets pulled up by this stronger friction, whereas the right one, which is now pretty free, can slide along the string and doesn't pull down. So that's why I've been going back and forth, back and forth like this. Even if we keep it horizontal, I mean, this up and down business is a red herring. It's purely a function of how the string is threaded through the binder clip that determines which way it goes. If I do it, for example, down, it still goes because the binder clips, clip is threaded that way. Whereas when I turn it around, then the binder clip comes my way or downward, it's, it's the same thing. Oops, ah, it, <laughs> sorry, maybe that's the end of the experiment. I have to okay. have a, okay, we got it, we got it. okay. I have to uh, have some more tape. Behave exactly the same way, whereas 45 degrees off, you get the higher.